when it comes to theology and church teaching, Pope Benedict XVI will long be considered a heavy hitter and a gift to church theologians. The former pope wrote three encyclicals on spiritual, social, and economic issues during his papacy. Among those, the encyclical God is Love, where he wrote, quote, being a Christian is not the result of an ethical choice or a lofty idea, but the encounter with an event, a person. And joining us now in our studio with more on the legacy of Pope Benedict XVI is Dr. Chad Pecknold, Associate Professor of Theology at the Catholic University of America. Dr. Pecknold, thank you so much for coming in today. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. You know, as we mentioned, Pope Benedict is really one of the great minds and the great theologians um, of the church. If there is one element of his teaching that really stands out to you, what would it be? I think that that striking way in which he always unites charity and truth, the way in which it's always a personal encounter with truth, who is love, and that these things can't be divorced. Love is not love, but love is a relationship to absolute truth, and that that encounter with Jesus Christ is divine charity and truth. I think that's the, the hallmark of his social encyclicals, but also the hallmark of all of his teaching. He sums it up at the end of his life by saying, Jesus, I love you. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more about that. Yeah. I mean, so simple, but so profound. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that's the fruit not only of piety, but of enormous learning and scholarship. You just see the way in which uh, a very learned theologian, maybe the most learned theologian of the 20th century, comes down to the very things that a Catholic grandmother at Mass knows, which was true for Aquinas, too. Aquinas knew that, that really the, the theologian doesn't really know anything more than the faithful, but knows it in... Uh, uh, more intellectual ways. I think the Pope had a a vision of of how to communicate the love of Jesus Christ uh, in uh, myriad ways in all of his encyclicals. From the very beginning of his career, uh, he focused on uh, a Christocentric way of looking at the whole world. Yeah, there was a headline today that really struck us um, that called him the Pope of the head yeah. and the heart. Yeah. Um, can you talk to us about that? Well, that's beautiful. I think that goes all the way back to the beginning of his work. His very early work was on Augustine on the people of God and how Christ is the head of the people of God. And we're united to him by our hearts. Uh, our hearts are united to him and he's the one who unites us by his love to himself and purifies us, cleanses us, us by love. It's love that purifies us and prepares us for communion with God. And so this is uh, the theme of being called to communion, that each of us are called to communion. Uh, and uh, that's personal. Right. It's, it's about an encounter with the living God. And the, the warmth of that is often obscured by sort of liberal commentary on, on him as the, you know, God's Rottweiler yeah. <laughs> and, and the dogmatician. But he's really the, the, the theologian of, of personal encounter with Jesus Christ. That's what he's about. Yeah, and we hear so much of that. We don't have a lot of time left, but I, I do want to touch on this because we've been seeing so many personal tributes on yeah. social media uh, to Pope Benedict. And I know you wrote one on Twitter too recently saying that he taught me to be a Catholic set against the dictatorship of relativism. He formed my piety. He awakened me to the beauty, truth, and perennial power of the ancient mass. His life was principally a conversation with God, and we are beneficiaries of that. Um, Chad, talk to us about why you wrote that. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the the way in which the, the modern mind has been shaken by skepticism, um, uh, in which we're not uh, really oriented to truth has been bad for people. It's been bad for societies. And he awakened us to that. He awakened us to our need for truth, but also our need for God, and that societies need God just like souls need God. And that the fundamental orientation of our souls and our societies is liturgical. What is the direction of our worship? And that's what was really at the bottom of everything uh, in Benedict's writing was what is our fundamental orientation towards God in reality and how can we reflect that in our lives and in our societies and, a, and an orientation to the Eucharist especially and to 
liturgy that was as reverent as it can be. And I think we think about some more in Pontificum, especially in the way in which he helped uh, kind of revive the ancient liturgy. But, but deeper than that is his sense that we must raise up our worship. We must reorient our souls so that we're not kind of chasing after fashion, but that we're oriented towards the God who is love. Yeah, we're going to leave it right there. Chad, thank you yeah. so much for coming My on. Pleasure. We really appreciate it. God bless you. Thank you.